Hello, it's time to start. I hope you can hear me all. Um, we did start the recording. Um, today we are in a session with Tom Reinders from Zerti. He is a developer from the Netherlands and he has 38 years of experience in designing and programming. Um, and he is a system architect. He is one of the core developers of the Zerti team. Uh, please know that you are muted, so if you want to say something, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, but you better can ask the questions in the chat. I will try to answer the questions, and if I can't, I will ask Tom to do so. Um, uh, Tom, the floor is yours. I will stop sharing. Let me see. Hello, hello. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Welcome. Uh, I want to talk about learning analytics and Xerti. Um, Inge already introduced uh, me. Uh, it was a short introduction of Inge herself as well. She's from the Xerti team as well, by coincidence. <laughs> Um, one of the goals that we set, that the project set uh, ourselves in 2018, when we were working on Xerti 3.6, is making it possible for non-programmers, as i.e. teachers, um, to use learning analytics and develop adaptive learning without programming. And the question we're trying to answer today is, did we succeed? So, um, and in doing so, uh, while doing so, uh, uh, we'll, we're going to build a small learning object and see what data ends up in an LRS and what you can do with that data. Uh, this is a bit of a technical slide, uh, what we uh, set up, uh, what you need is a Xerti installation. Um, the Xerti installation uh, needs uh, to be LTI enabled. I will explain uh, how to do that. And you will need a separate LRS. Uh, most of the time we are using learning, learning locker, but we've tested with uh, scorn.cloud as well. Sadly, uh, Open Imperio's Open LRS doesn't work uh, because, uh, um, or Open LRW, uh, because um, that's really geared to caliper statements and um, although you can send xapi statements to open lrw you can't read them back or at least not in a way that we want and that we need um, i'll uh, share this uh, presentation with you after the uh, talk as well um, I've prepared some slides in which I show you how to create an XAPI tracked learning object, uh, but I propose that we won't use the slides. I'm going to do it live. Um, that was the wrong button. So I have a Xerti install, and I'm going to start create a new learning object. We're going to call it open stereo tracked x api doesn't really matter we call it and create and this is the first step in our learning object we give it a name x api tracked learning object if you look at the steps that we need to do is we need to create a learning object. We need to insert some interactive content. I'll be adding a title page and a multiple choice question. Then you need to enable XAPI tracking, then test. And then if you want, we can add an adaptive content page as a kind of a mini dashboard. So that's, those are the steps that I'm going to do. So the first step uh, I already did. Uh, so we have created the learning object. I want to have the learning object in English, not in Flemish. Oh, sorry, the whole installation is somehow in Flemish. Let's switch to English, which is better. This one. 
So we have an empty learning object. Title, let's add a title page. It's not working like expected. I don't know why that is. Which is a bit. Let me give it one more try. If I don't succeed, we'll go back to the slides, which would be a pity. Open the editor, text, hmm, strange. Why is this? Let me give it one more try. Title. No, doesn't work. I don't know why. Let's see what I can do with the one that I prepared. Doesn't work either. No, no. I really don't know what's happening here. Okay, back to the, so I've got some slides. So what I did was create a learning object. Um, so you, you uh, choose a name for the learning object and then you get a new window with an empty learning object. And in that learning object with the plus normally you can add some pages like a title page and a multiple choice page. Uh, a multiple choice question and um, uh, you fill in the, de the, the question, you can fill in the details of the answers and for each answer you have to indicate whether the answer is uh, true or false and then one of the most important thing is that for each multiple choice questions you have to indicate a kind of tracking label. And the tracking label uh, will be the uh, identifier of the XAPI record in the uh, LRS that we can use later on to retrieve data on this specific question. So to enable, so when you have your learning object and when you create the learning objects, you don't need to concern yourself with all the details of tracking, etc., except those labels. That's the only thing you have to keep in the, uh, in, in the back of your mind. Uh, that you have to add those labels to uh, as a key to be able to retrieve the data afterwards. Then when you've done that, and I'm trying to, I'm going to try to see whether that part of the website at least is working, you can go to the properties. And in the property uh, window, you have a tab called LTI X API. Um, and here, uh, I can enable this specific learning object as an LTI1 tool and I can enable XAPI tracking. And uh, then I have the choice whether I want to use the globally configured XAPI um, credentials or that this learning object has to be tracked in a specific LRS for a specific institute of a specific student. So that, th those are the choices that I have. So and we have a question. Yes. Um, in a large repository of learning objects, would it be correct that the naming conventions become very important? Um, the naming conventions of those uh, tracking labels, not really, because the, the real key uh, that we will use to retrieve the data, uh, well, they are important, but they have to be uh, unique per learning object. So not over all the learning objects, but per learning objects. And that is because part of the key 
is the unique identifier of that learning object itself. Uh, so to retrieve the results of that multiple choice question that I just created, uh, um, the key is 717 because that's the, the ID of my, my learning object, slash MCQ, that's the label that I entered. Does that answer your question? Yes, that helps, he said. Okay. okay. Thanks, Martin. So once I have filled in the details of, of the, the XAPI, uh, LRS, etc., and, and I've enabled uh, the XAPI, uh, let's switch off uh, the uh, LTI for now, uh, I can update uh, the, the, this page and I get a launch URL here. And in this case, it's not LTI enabled, so I get a specific XAPI launch. And if I use that URL, and it should be posted here as well, so like this. I can open the learning object here and have a look at that. I get one question, uh, which city is the seat of government in the Netherlands? Well, that happens to be The Hague, and not Amsterdam. That looks correct, uh, although Amsterdam is the capital of the Netherlands, the seat of the government is in The Hague. And uh, then I can stop this learning object and uh, I did that wrong, I think. I closed the whole browser. I didn't intend to do that. Uh, I can uh, go back to my learning environment um, and see the results of my interaction and activities in this space. Okay. If you paid a bit of attention, then this was zero to start with, and now uh, it's one. And if I do it again, I'll quickly do that. Give the wrong answer. And I'll refresh the screen. graph should have been changed. So this is retrieving the data from the LRS, if it wants to work. And there you go. If you, um, have, so the, the, the Zerti has a, a built-in uh, dashboard. So if I press this graph, this launching graph, I get the details of the answers. And I'm afraid that this doesn't work either. Um, something wrong with the network, don't know why. So, but normally you would be presented here with detailed data and uh, 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 like this. And so there were uh, a total number of nine students that did this test and total number of 103 XAPI records written and um, uh, the starting time of a specific uh, attempt. Uh, so it gives you some details in uh, how this um, exercise was done. And I'll get some details also how which it is the government in the Netherlands and the correct answer is the Hague. 67% of the participants had this correct. Try to go back to my presentation that I closed. Uh, where are we? So I created uh, and then published uh, the settings and the XAPI settings, and then I did some uh, testing, and I and now I want to show you how you can add a kind of a mini dashboards to that learning object, and it, it, this this will allow you to add a, a, another page. 
And in this page, you uh, uh, have to specify uh, the number and the ID of the learning object for which you want to read the data. And you have to use that same tracking label again, and then you can create some bars. And this is an example of, of such a, um, a drawing. So let me try that live again. Let's see whether you are a bit more fortunate than we were. Previously, no. It's really a pity. Don't know what's going on. Try one more time in a different browser and then I'll give up and continue with the presentation. Maybe you can stop your video, maybe that helps. Perhaps. As you can hear, Ian and I happen to be in the same room. really, really, really don't understand what's happening here, but can't change it. Uh, I'm trying to go back to the presentation. Sorry about that. But uh, uh, there is an adaptive content page in Xerti, uh, and if you uh, enter the correct data, uh, you can uh, read back uh, the um, uh, the data of your questions. Um, uh, as a test, uh, I try to do that in the same learning object as where the question is in, uh, but that's not necessary. You can also create a separate learning object uh, that has that retrieves that data from any other learning object within the same installation, or at least with a connection to the same LRS where you wrote the data to. And one other try that uh, one, one of the things that I did just now is uh, send the credentials of the actor uh, using uh, the command line. Um, it had so the, the, the actor in this case is given to Xerti uh, through the URL. Uh, but uh, it would be much so much nicer if I knew which student is doing this. So one of the ways of doing that is using LTI. And you can publish any um, Xerti uh, learning object as an LTI tool within that same prop uh, property page uh, that we looked at earlier. Uh, so is if we go to the LTI X API tab, the only thing I need to do is press that uh, check mark. This normally is auto generated. You can change it if you want. If you find this is too complicated, you can uh, change this data. And this is uh, available uh, if uh, Tsubi is installed next to Xerti. Uh, and if Tsubi is not installed next to Xerti, uh, then this text is changed and you will get a link here in this text uh, pointing to instructions on how to install that. But once you have published your learning object as an LTI tool, um, you can, this is Moodle, you can set up uh, an external LTI tool using this, these names, uh, the, the key in the secret and the launching URL. And I've done this in our Moodle. And I'm still logged in. I'll go to the LTI test bed, and there we have the LTI test. And if I did this, is pointing to my external tool. And the external tool in this case happens to be that uh, Xerti object. And it will give a signature. Oh, well, uh, 
Murphy is uh, doing his best. <coughs> Demoitis, uh, Chris yeah. Beach says. <laughs> oh, oh, validation for your team. Uh, Okay, well, perhaps it was because I changed the credentials, possibly, don't know. So I'm going to look at that. You can edit the, session, the settings here. Uh, can go to the external tool. This is the page that I had. I'm looking at the Dude, this is my password and this is changed. I see, don't know why. Yeah, this is different. So, let's do it like that. Uh, save changes. And let's retry. And we are completely out of luck today. <laughs> Which is okay. Uh, now it starts, or at least. No. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry that I can't show you this. I I'm, I'm, I'm really don't know what's happening here. Um, um, good. Try one more thing. I'm going to switch off that um, LTI again. Then at least. And then updates. Use that link again. Link again give you hopefully a view of that mini dashboard which is in there if it wants to work which probably it doesn't but what it's doing now is retrieving the results of that multiple choice question and it should present that in a graph so there's obviously something completely wrong with my networking, but I, I have no clue what it is. I'm yep. really sorry about that. There's a question from Chris Beach. Yeah. Um, if you export the Xerti learning object as SCORM and run it outside of Xerti, will it still call out to the LRS? No. No, um, uh, Xerti itself, uh, when, you author, when you're when you authoring the, the learning of that, doesn't know how it's going to be tracked. So uh, depending on what you do next uh, is giving you the opportunity to track it through XAPI and or uh, as a SCORM um, package. And SCORM and XAPI are regrettably uh, not compatible. Uh, so if you export it as a SCORM package, then you will not be able to track it through XAPI. No. Um, so uh, now what do you need for this? So well, you need an, an, a Xerti install. Uh, if you want to have LTI, uh, you need to in, uh, add LTI support. Uh, we, we use a, a, a full copy of the Tsuki project, also an Aperio project, um, uh, which will be installed into the Xerti um, uh, uh, folder on the server. Uh, and that will be used by, um, that, that's the only thing you need to do. Uh, and there is a, 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 an installation guide here. And when you've done that, uh, you can co configure your LTI tools like I showed you. The next thing you need is a separate LRS. And then uh, probably the easiest is to configure in the management page of the Xerti install uh, the, the, all the settings of the XAPI installation. So that's the, 
the endpoint and the XAPI key in the secret uh, for the for the XAPI store. And then you have some other um, capabilities to have whether you want to enable the uh, dashboard that's available or not, uh, whether you want to enable the non-anonymous view of the dashboard if you want, and if the dashboard is available only as an author or also as a co-author or an editor. So what were the challenges that we had with implementing all this? So one of the biggest challenges we had was um, security and specifically uh, safeguarding the login credentials of the learning record store and because the XAPI statements are sent in JavaScript. Uh, so if I uh, would have the credentials in JavaScript, uh, the, the only thing you would have to do is open up the uh, development console of the browser and you would be able to read the login credentials of the LRS. Obviously, uh, we didn't want that. Um, in the end, um, the only way we saw to, re to fix that is to create a server-side XAPI proxy. Uh, so the JavaScript sends the um, XAPI records to the proxy. The proxy retrieves the actual uh, login credentials from the Xerti database, and that sends the uh, XAPI records to the LRS. The other thing that we noticed was really a challenge was the context. Um, and all the XAPI records basically are independent of each other. Uh, but if you want to create a dashboard that makes sense to a, a student or, or a, a, a teacher, uh, you have to have some context on what, the, uh, what, what activity the events uh, are part of. Uh, so in the end, we made use of a lot of XAPI extensions and XAPI extensions is a, a natural way of adding extra context data to XAPI uh, records um, that you can retrieve from the LRS back again. Uh, so what we can do is add things like a category or course or module name or even the, the name of the group if uh, the LTI implementation happens to send the group information over. There's another question from Chris. Yep. Uh, so when SUGI is used, it creates the LTI bits, but acts as a pass through to Xerti. So the Xerti learning object still lives in Xerti. This XAPI is still available. Yes, correct. So that was, was one of the other goals. Uh, what we wanted to be able to do is make the, the, the uh, correction cycle of, of learning materials uh, uh, as short as possible. Uh, so one of the major drawbacks of SCORM packages is that uh, if you uh, uh, publish your learning objects in SCORM and you upload them to your LMS and you notice there is a, a typo or whatever, you have to go back to Xerti, fix the typo, export uh, the SCORM package again and re-upload to the learning um, to the LMS again. Uh, so when enabling LTI and uh, placing the, uh, the object as an LTI object in Moodle, for example, or Sakai, uh, then you can, uh, then the, the, the learning object really stays in Xerti. The only thing you need to do is fix the typo and everything is okay again. So yes, the, the learning object still resides in uh, Xerti. One minute left. Yeah. So um, uh, I, I have uh, created some links to uh, uh, some examples you can uh, look at uh, in your own time. And um, at the end of the presentation, there are some links to extra information, amongst others, to the Xerti community website and also to the Xerti GitHub. Uh, and there is our email address as well. Uh, so you can contact me or Inge whenever you have a question about um, uh, things. And if you encounter the same technical problems that I encountered uh, today, normally I would be the one to help you out. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best and see what was <laughs> happening. Okay, Tom, thank you. Thank you for this session. Um, I wish you all a pleasant uh, pause. And I hope to see you soon again in the lightning talks. They are uh, the next session. Bye.
Check up name. Did the ring stop? Huh? The video is stopped. And flight. 